Kelly, first of all, I just want to say the entire country feels like we're holding your hands, your collective hands. I want to know just how you're doing today. Well, I was just telling some of my family that today's a little bit, there's a little bit more of a sense of calm. I think you get to a point where your body will just physically not let you cry anymore, or at least all day. Still, every second is is horrible, but you start to come to terms with it a little bit. Six years ago, Bob Saget and Kelly Rizzo, a food and travel blogger from Chicago, met after connecting on Instagram. Married since 2018, friends say they had a love for the ages. I'm watching you and you're sitting in your home that you shared with with Bob. And I just wondered if you're remembering all the, the little things, if that pops up. Well, it's impossible here not to, but the support has been that that has been the one silver lining from this is the incredible outpouring of love and support not only from just everybody that loved bob but also for me and just from his friends and family it's been i don't know how else i'd be getting through this right now the number of people cal who loved Bob is just, I, I can't even quantify. I heard someone say that Bob was an I love you guy. He put it all out there. He told everyone that he loved. And I mean, quite frankly, anyone he met and even spent any time with at all, he told them he loved them endlessly and tirelessly. And that was his entire message. If you knew Bob and he loved you, you knew it. There was never ever a doubt in your mind. I mean, even at his, at, at his memorial, there were a lot of people there and every single person was pretty much like, oh, I talked to Bob last week. I'm like, mm. how did he have the time mm. to talk to everybody and tell everybody that he loved them all the time? It was just amazing. We had an interview with, with Mike Young, who's, you know, a comedian and dear friend of Bob's. He said something, Kel, that struck um, struck me. He said, most comedians, after a stand-up gig, they catch the last flight home. He said, not Bob. Bob wanted to catch the first flight home. He wanted to be with you, Kelly. And he said that that their love was was perfect. Yeah. Sorry. Um, that was what was always so special is every time he would be out of town, he would always try to, he would, you know, he would work so hard and he, um, you know, he'd love to sleep in, but when he was away, he would always try to, he would still wake up at, you know, go to bed at two and then wake up at four so he could be on the 6 a.m. flight so he could come home just so we could spend time together. So, you know, he valued every single second that we had together. So that's why it's, you know, this is so heartbreaking. But at the same time, I know that we, you know, every second that we had together was just maximized to the fullest. And we absolutely just, there was nothing, you know, left unsaid and nothing left on the table. Mm -hmm. So those are the things that I'm just trying to hold on to, you know. You know, I feel like everyone felt like they knew Bob because everyone mm -hmm. grew up watching him or, or even young kids now were watching him again on TV. But uh, Kel, who was the Bob Saget like at dinner when there was no audience? It was still the same. And he just tried to make everybody feel special and happy and comfortable. And it's funny, like our, our dry cleaners, he has, I always joke that he had a deeper relationship with them than he had with anybody, you know, like they love him and he loved them. And his constant message was just treat everybody with kindness because you know he'd gone through so much in his life and he knew how hard life could be and so he always was just so kind and loving to everybody and he was just I'm sorry he was just such a he was just the best man i've ever known in my life and he was just so kind and so wonderful and everybody that was in his life knew it <laughs> And even anybody that would just casually meet him was like, wow, this is a special guy. And he was yours. And by all accounts, he was living his best life. Did you think he was feeling okay during during all this time? All I'll say is that he was very happy and he was just thrilled to be back out on the road. And he was 
also very sensitive and just all the weight of everything going on in the world right now. He, it was just weighing very heavily on him. And that's mm. why he felt more compelled than ever to make people laugh and bring people together. And he did it up until the very last moments. You know, we've all lost someone in our life. And sometimes you hang on to the last text, the last conversation, <laughs> the last connection. Is that is that Kel, the case with you? I'm just very grateful that it was all, I love you so much. Mm -hmm. It was, I think I said, I love you dearly. And he said, I love you endlessly. And then he mm -hmm. said, I said, I can't wait to see you tomorrow. And then, you know, it was just all very, it was just all love. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's, that is, that's beautiful, Kel. Um, when we were seeing the images of everyone saying goodbye at the funeral, is there anything that you feel comfortable sharing about what it was like? Were you able to speak? I don't think I'll get too much into it, but I did speak and it was just the whole thing as painful as it was, was beautiful to be surrounded by so many people who loved him and who loved each other. I can't even verbalize the level of support. I'm so grateful for it. One of the things that he was very passionate about was uh, scleroderma that took his sister Gay's life. And one of the most beautiful things of this was nobody said, hey, everybody go donate to scleroderma in Bob's honor. But do you know what everyone did? They donated. They, they to did it. Bob was dedicated to finding a cure for scleroderma, an autoimmune disease that took his sister's life. The Scleroderma Research Foundation estimates that Bob raised more than $26 million for the SRF in his lifetime. He had three life's works. One was his children, next was comedy, and then the SRF. He spent over 30 years tirelessly working so hard to try to find a cure for scleroderma. So that's why anything that I can do to help keep that legacy going and just help with the SRF because it meant so much to him. As I'm sitting here reflecting and sitting with you is that Bob spent his life and he sort of united people just by being himself. He wasn't trying. And in his passing, he's doing it again. I've never seen anything like this. It's, it's unbelievable. The just the outpouring, but the consensus overall of what an amazing person he was, whether people knew him or didn't know him, because one way or another, he was in your living room since the 80s, yeah. or, you know, you went to shows, I mean, whatever it is, it was, um, he felt like he was everyone's, you know, dear friend, nobody will ever be like Bob. And I think he just kind of lived his life unafraid, which is what struck me. He found love again in his 60s. He told his friends, I love you. He was back on stage. Like the guy was fearless. And I think that's what struck me about it. And she loved all parts of him. But, and even, you know, on stage, he had that like that raunchy side. She yeah. was like, but that was part of him. <laughs> yeah. He wasn't afraid. No, he's truthful. Yeah, he you really know? told the truth. It's just like, it just is so moving. I hope it's comforting to her that everyone, so many people just mm -hmm. feel so connected to him and are just missing him and loving him. And what a wonderful legacy to leave. Well, one of the things that's become obvious over the last couple of weeks is Bob Saget was a special guy. Mm -hmm. Kelly? Yeah. Also pretty special. Uh, amazingly special. Yeah. And Bob made friendships late in life. You saw John Mayer just mm -hmm. sobbing after Bob passed. And you just thought, like, wow. He kept, he, his circle kept yeah. getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Wow. That was a good conversation. Um, we're going to yeah. hear a lot more from Kelly in the third and fourth hours, yeah. including the beautiful story of how she and Bob first met. He actually oh. pursued her. And she was like, Bob Second wants to date me. <laughs> okay. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.